Good morning everyone from Ecuador. Today's video I'm going to be making a little booklet for my husband that has um, small photos, kind of like Instax photos in it, of the past 20 years. February 8th will be our 20th wedding anniversary. So I decided I'd make him a little flip book. This is the beginnings of it. And I'll show you how I made it. Um, it's nowhere near finished at this moment, but you'll see it to completion. Um, so I'm making this little flip book and it has 20 years. I tried to narrow it down to one photo a year of us, which come to find out was um, not too difficult because I actually didn't have that many photos of just him and I. It's funny because when we first got married, um, digital photography didn't really exist. Um, and all those photos that I have are back in the States in storage right now. Then when digital photography did start, um, our first daughter was born. So there's pictures of me with her and him with her or us with the kids, but there's not many photos of just him and I. So I guess that's something we can work on starting in year 20. <laughs> anyway, so I was able to narrow it down for most years um, to one photo per year. I think the only year I couldn't find, actually there were two years, I couldn't find one of us together. One year was in 2001 and the other one was like 2004. So, but other than that, um, I found the photos and I printed them out and I'll show you the app and everything in this video that I used in order to put them in here. Um, I'm using a new software that allows me to use the webcam on my PC and also um, video my screenshots off of um, my computer screen as I'm, as I'm working on the Cricut Design space. So let me know if you like the both feature or if you prefer me to shut the webcam off when I am doing the uh, videos from my actual uh, computer screen. So just let me know which way you prefer and that's how I'll start recording them in the future. So today's video is going to feature how I import images from um, digital kits such as American Crafts. American Crafts has a digital site called AC Digitals that carries their Amy Tangerine, um, Dear Lizzie, um, Crate Papers on there so that carries Maggie Holmes. All of those digital kits I download uh, little by little especially when they have a sale. Um, I'll go ahead and download some. That way I can use the print and cut feature because here in Ecuador it's hard for me to just go get scrapbook paper. It doesn't exist here. There is not a scrapbook store anywhere here. Um, so I have to use digital here a lot until I can figure out a way to get product here. I do have a trip planned back to the States this year so when I go back to the States I'll pick up items there and bring them with me here for this year. Um, but until then I'm using digital kits. I have friends who recently bought a Cricut and they were wondering if they have to have the Cricut subscription and the answer is no. So that's the other thing this particular video will show is how to use the Cricut um, software and the Cricut Explorer Air um, without having to use a subscription or to buy cartridges. So I'm just going to make some embellishments for this little guy today and we'll add those in and um, that's what we'll make for today. The first thing I'm doing to make my booklet is I'm going to be using two sheets of 12 by 12 designer paper. I chose designer paper that is double-sided instead of cardstock because it's thinner and um, since I have so many pictures um, it won't get too bulky. It will have enough strength on the pages just from the pictures themselves since those are printed on photo paper. So this is designer paper from the American Crafts line. Um, I believe this one is Fifth and Frolic. So it's double sided. So all I did was measured four inches down and I cut this twice. 
So that gave me three strips. First I cut it at the four inch mark and then I cut it at the eight inch mark. Then I used my Martha Stewart scoring board right here and I scored at the three inch mark and then the six and then the nine. And so that gives me this nice fold. So when I counted my pictures, I found that I will need more than just these here. How I attach them is I'll go on to the last flap. Say this is my front cover. I like how it has this little bit of distressed tape on the front. So I want that to be the front cover. It'll flip open. I'm gonna write my message here and put our wedding photo here. So as I flip, this last piece right here is where I need to attach my second one. So that will slide and I'll tape it down right there. You can use adhesive runner or you can use glue, whichever works easier. Then I have more folds and then this fold flips up this direction. So I'll slide in my last piece right there and attach it on this side. And then I have that as my back cover, which matches the front with that tape. But what I'm going to do is since I don't have enough pages with just these three, I'm going to add one more sheet. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm going to cut it at the four inch mark, and then I'm gonna score it at the three, six, and nine. little photos here with an app on my iPhone that's called Instance. It was really easy to do. I'll show you what the logo looks like. This is what the Instance app logo looks like. So I just go to my camera roll and I picked a photo, say like the wedding photo, and it gives you several different options of frame types and sizes that you can use. So if you want the Polaroid film all around it on all the edges, you'll want to scroll down and use this skinny option right here. That one will um, allow you to have a frame all the way around it and it looks a lot like an Instax photo. But I didn't necessarily want that much white around mine, so I chose a little bit of a larger one, which was the very first one. That one looks more like a, a traditional Polaroid, but it allowed me to cut the sides off a little bit um, so that I had this type of look instead, where it's just the photo with the date bar just at the bottom. So what you do is you click on the edit here and you just type in whatever you want to type. And then it'll save it to your camera roll. So after I made my um, images, I went into this app called Pick Stitch. And what's nice about Pick Stitch is you can change the aspect ratio. So first I knew I wanted to have four photos per four by six page. So I clicked on the four grids, then I click on this button that says aspect, and I chose four by six. So that gives me the option to add four photos. And then I just went back in, and what Instance does is it puts all of your photos into one folder. So you can click on that folder 
and you can go grab your photos. So I grabbed four pictures and then you just drag them in there. Because the ones that I made were a little bit on the wider side, I have to go back in and center them a little bit just so that my words are centered. And then I just sent it to my printer. Um, I have a Canon selfie printer, so I have another app on my phone that I send it to the selfie and it prints them out. And then all I did was cut those four photos out. So that's how you can make little bitty photos either for your Midori Traveler's Notebook or for something like this. So now I'm just going to glue my photos in and finish off this little booklet. in here I'm going to go back into my um, digital what do you call into my digital kits that I have for fifth and frolic and also maybe Maggie Holmes because I think this particular paper came out of one of the Maggie Holmes collections and um, I'll show you how I do it on my computer of pulling in a digital file into the Cricut um, print and cut so that I'm able to print those images and then cut them out using my Cricut machine. Okay, so for the first thing you'll do is you'll go to your Cricut landing page. You'll see it says Cricut Access and Subscription Offer right here. So if you don't currently have a subscription, it'll probably make this offer for you. At this moment, I'm not using the subscription. Um, I do sometimes and then other times I don't. Right now, for what I've been creating, I haven't needed it, so I am not subscribed at this time. Um, it's, it's an optional thing. You can do it for a month or two when you want it, and then you can shut it off at any time. It's really beneficial. I've used it both ways. But today, we're going to demonstrate how to use this without having the subscription. So you'll just go down here to the Create New Project and click on that. So that'll give you your um, your mat. And what I'm going to be doing is upload images. So you'll see down here, I have some that I had imported from Maggie Holmes' collection a while back. I'll show you what I mean. Let me click on Upload Image and click on Browse. And here you'll see it opens up some folders that I have. Now, when I first downloaded these, I was using my Silhouette Cameo. So that's why it says Silhouette here. But digital files work both um, for both machines. So in showing the Cricut, you'll see I had downloaded from American Crafts website the um, Fifth and Frolic Collection. So their website is acdigitals.com, and I'll link that below in the description um, if you're wanting to find out where to download digital scrapbook files. So these are the individual elements, and for this particular one, it's full of memories and things like that, and it's an anniversary, so I'm looking for things like cameras and hearts. I love the birds. So most of these I do not have in my Cricut library yet. So I'll show you how to import these. Um, I thought this one would be really cute, the little key, because I do have a photo of our very first apartment. So let me show you how I'm going to import that. So I click on that one item and click open. And you'll see it'll spin and it'll think about it a little bit. All of this gray and white squares 
are going to be transparent. That is not going to print out that way. When I have an image like this, it's not, I wouldn't rank it as complex, but it does have some color and um, some features in it. So I'm going to click moderately complex image. And then, sorry, I have to move my window so I can click my proper buttons here. Um, moderately complex image and then click continue. So here it gives you the option to further clean up your image if you want to. Um, you can reduce colors, tolerance, all of those types of things. But when I look at this, it looks very clean. It found a clean edge to cut on and everything. So I'm going to just leave it as it is and click continue. In this case, I want to save it as a print then cut image. That means it will print it exactly like this. Now if you want it to happen to save a key shape to be able to cut out of any scrapbook paper, then you can click on this key right here. And that key, um, you can just place a piece of paper on your scrapbook, on your um, cutting mat, and it'll cut out that key shape. But I want it to print and then cut this exact image right here. On this side of the screen, it gives you the option to name your image. Now, this might look like Greek to you, but I understand what this means because I've had it saved as this folder name for such a long time. That's how it actually downloaded, um, that's the actual name downloaded directly off of the website. AC for American Crafts, Digital DL, Fifth and Frolic is the name of the um, paper line. EP is the Element Pack 1. And then this particular item, they call it a key with the word happiness. So that name makes perfect sense to me. Now you can always rename it to something else if that works better for you. So down here, I will tag it as something as simple as key um, because that's what the item is and I'll click save. So now you'll see it added the, the file here. It has a black line around it showing that it is a cut file and then the color shows that it is print. So I'm going to select this image and insert it onto my mat. Now when I look at it, I can see it's about an inch wide and three inches tall. Well, that's a little big for the project I'm working on today. So I'm going to scale it down to about the size that I think would be good. A little over an inch and it's half an inch skinny. So that should be okay to work for my project. So now I'm going to start inserting some more images um, and then I'll show you how to print and cut. So when you hit the green button for the Cricut to go, it will automatically search for your Explore Air. So make sure that your Cricut is turned on. Also make sure that your printer is on because the first thing it's going to prompt you, prompt you for is to print the page from your home printer. So I'm going to click this and print those copies on my, on my printer and then I'll be back, set the material load the material, and cut. So the nice thing is the software steps you through every step. Okay, so now it's trimmed everything out 
and I hope you can see it, but you'll see where um, the Cricut left the little bleed line. That way, all the way to the very edge of my cut items, I have color instead of white. So that's why I left that little bleed option on. This particular mat is the light grip mat, and this is the one I've really enjoyed using. Um, it's just a lot easier to remove whenever you have a print and cut. This is Georgia Pacific cardstock that I got at Walmart. Um, very inexpensive for a huge ream of white cardstock. So I just put this through my printer and then it comes off very easily. So now I'll just take these individual pieces off. 